the year when ACT or the year after ACT. Yeah, that's the other hypothesis that drugs and foreign proteins and ACT causes AIDS. The foreign proteins, proteins are in the factor eight preparations. That means hemophiliacs indeed have a immunosuppressive risk because in order to survive they are dependent on foreign proteins. So they have more um, opportunistic problems than other people, but they still have almost a normal life uh, lifespan now. It's we used uh, foreign proteins in treating uh, autoimmune diseases, so it has indeed a immunosuppressive uh, reaction. Yeah, an old guard urges virologists to go back to basics. It was in science. Thanks to techniques like PCR and sequencing, diagnostic labs can perform high sensitivity tests of a battery of viruses in a matter of hours. But by comparing viral genomes, researchers can even construct complete phylogenetic trees. Although this is terrific, a string of DNA letters in a data bank tells little or nothing about how a virus multiplies or how it makes people sick. And nowadays uh, we get more and more new viruses. Um, there is a similar epidemic, like the AIDS epidemic, that is the hepatitis C epidemic. I don't know whether some of you know the origin of that. We have A, we have B, and we had a, a post-transfusion hepatitis where researchers thought there could be another infectious agent. And they made a, um, they tried to find out, they took blood from a patient with a post-transfusion hepatitis and put it into chimpanzees and had one control uh, in another room. That was the control. So they, they had five chimpanzees uh, injected with blood and the control was not injected with blood, it was just, just kept in another room. And uh, well, they found nothing in these uh, uh, infected chimpanzees, but they found a little string of RNA and they, they built an antibody against it. That was the hepatitis C antibody. And this antibody now, they spread to the population and quite a lot of people react positive to this antibody, HCV. And they are told now, well, you have a problem. You have it not now, but you have it probably in the next 30 years. And uh, that you don't get in, in, in 30 years in liver problems, it should be good for you to take antivirals today already. That's what a colleague of mine found in uh, hepatitis C negative individuals. That was a colleague in Lübeck, Denin. He found this virus-specific DNA sequence in human DNA in healthy HCV, HCV negative individuals. That means it's possible that these sequences uh, in the in the human genome. And if you look at the clinical outcomes after a hepatitis C infection, then you find uh, that there is, uh, in fact, nothing. They come out from 62,000 women. Uh, they found seven cirrhosis, that it's even less than you would uh, expect in the normal population. And confronted with this, they told me, well, maybe they drank less alcohol because they knew they were infected. Also, um, if you talk about hepatitis C, they are quick to point out that there are, of course, cofactors like alcohol and drugs, which could uh, make things worse. But if you need a cofactor, you can say, well, the factor is enough. Uh, alcohol could be the factor and the drugs could be the factor as well. You don't need a virus to get a liver cirrhosis and the liver cell carcinoma. That's the same. Shows that the hepatitis C is not, not a really, not a serious problem. This was done by Seyfedal. They looked on frozen seras. They had a 45 years follow-up in the army 
um, and they found out that mortality and morbidity in, in liver problems are almost the same in HCV positive and HCV negative people. They had no liver related morbidity and mortality rates. But still, if you ask the doctor now, today, you get, you, you get to hear we have to measure your virus load, and if it's high, we have to treat you. And it's a big problem for surgeons, for instance, because they have to be treated, um, otherwise they are not allowed to operate anymore. That's the trick with the incubation period. The problem is that if you are tested positive, in most cases you have no uh, serious health problems. That's why you have invent an incubation period, HIV 15 years, HCV 30 years, BSE almost 55 years, and HPV 55. And then we are here with life is a sexually transmitted disease which ends deadly after an incubation period of 77 years. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we have to mention Charlton Gadiusek because he was the one who invented this um, chapter of slow viruses. And uh, maybe you remember all the trials he did in the Papua New Guinea when he uh, got this uh, dementia kuru kuru and he thought it was transmissible via cannibalism. To prove that he uh, fed some chimpanzees with a supposedly infected brain but that didn't irritate them and then uh, he injected them the brain but still that irri didn't irritate them and then he made a bizarre experiment. He drew small holes in the head of the animals and put the supposedly infected brain in. And all of a sudden, the animals got sick. And <laughs> at that moment, he thought he had a transmissible disease. But it was, in fact, an uh, experimental allergic reaction to a these foreign proteins which make the ape sick. But this kuru kuru should, should have a, uh, a consequence. You all remember the BSE panic. I, uh, I just want to show that the, the inconsistencies of epidemiology with BSE and new variant of Kreuzfeld Jakob disease. On the, I found these two things, one in the Lancet and one, uh, these two pictures, one in the Lancet and one in, the, in Nature. And both, one showed the incidence of non-variant of Kreuzfeld-Jakob disease, the other one showed the incidence of BSE. And you see there's a, directly a non-correlation. That would really disprove that there was a correlation. But um, obviously nobody saw it. And I sent it to, to uh, a journal and, and asked him just to show that without any words. <laughs> But they wouldn't like to show the picture, there, so I had to write a letter, and they published it. But um, that would we have that would that would have been much nicer, I think, because it, you see it with one glance. So, but back to AIDS. Why was this medical disaster, um, the, the ACT problem, not visible in time? I would just try to explain to you that. Uh, why the doctors didn't notice it. The doctor had no clinical experience with HIV pa or with AIDS patients in Germany, at least in our clinic. We'd, we just heard from America that there have been some AIDS patients who were really uh, who, who were dying in their 30s. And uh, that's why they didn't know what was going on. In treating them with ACT, the patients behave as expected. They wasted away. The symptoms of progressive AIDS intoxication were almost indistinguishable from progressing AIDS at that time. The next, please. And this is, uh, I think, the central question. Why is the medical establishment so sure that they are right? They are so sure that they don't even have to come to the spectator and uh, that they don't have to discuss this problem. 
you have, when you treat the AIDS patient, you have two situations. The patient is healthy, then his viral load is going, is going measured and the CDC are measured, or the patient is sick and he gets antivirals and the, C, the CD4 cells goes up and the viral load goes down. And the patient is, in most cases, clinically improving. So they ask, where's the question? The CD4, the, the surrogate marker, behaved as expected and the patient is clinically improving. So they really ask you, where is the question? The explanation is that uh, the, the viral load goes down if you give a cytotoxic treatment. It's an unspecific reaction. And today, you can find any microbe with PCR. The problem is, if you find CMV and herpes and HIV and HCV nowadays, you get a treatment for every, for every microbe. I had, a, I had a patient seen in, in Italy who was treated for lymphoma. He got also against herpes, which is another nucleoside analog, and he got treatment against CMV. He got treatment against HCV. It was a unbelievable amount of chemical insults and uh, it didn't last very long. He was dead within two months. But he was actually suffering from a lymphoma. That's another question. Is a low CD4 count exclu exclusively seen in an HIV infection? The problem is it's only measured in HIV infection. Nobody measures it uh, if you're not HIV infected. That's why the correlation is quite good. <laughs> but if you measure it in HIV negative patients, you sometimes find uh, the same uh, CD4 problems uh, which you find in HIV positive patients. You see it, for instance, in CMV infection and you see it in sarcoidosis, for instance, is another disease which does exactly what HIV is said to do. It has a low CD4 count, a high CD8, and um, <coughs> you have infiltrates in the lung, and if you give a cytotoxic treatment, people improve. So there are maybe quite a lot of AIDS diseases, um, sarcoidosis, and that's why they improve when you give a cytotoxic treatment. There are some diseases which react good to the cytotoxic treatment, you know, autoimmune diseases, we, co we, we treat with cortisone, not with very much success, so, uh, but we do it and the patients uh, get better. Lupus, Wegener's disease, all the chronic um, bowel disease get better if you give cytotoxic treatment. Polymyalgie gets better. Um, mycobacterial infections or sarcoidosis gets better. Lymphomas. Protozoan disease, a number of parasites induce strong suppressor mechanism, including T suppressor cells, which eliminate the host's effective immune responses. So some protozoan disease itself make immune suppression, which is a big problem in Africa, probably. And also those um, protozoan disease, you can hit with uh, antiviral drugs, of course, but uh, it would be much better to treat these protozoan disease with proven drugs, which selectively kill the protozoans and not so much of the cells of the host. Also, malaria and leishmaniosis will uh, have problems with antiviral drugs, but still it's much better to treat malaria with, with uh, proven drugs and toxoplasmosis as well. Uh, but, but I have cases with toxoplasmosis in gay men they improved under antiviral drugs and the toxoplasmosis went. So uh, for the orthodox uh, doctors, that's proof that antiviral therapy helps. But you cannot get toxoplasmosis therapy as a single therapy if you are HIV positive nowadays. You always get antiviral drugs. The short the history of antiviral treatment, the only good thing is that it's getting less and less. That's why people living longer and longer. And uh, in t since 2000, we do a lot of treatment interruptions. People, uh, patients himself do a lot of treatment interruptions. And uh, that's why the survival time gets better and better. Next. 
Yeah, that's what I told a colleague of mine. Why, did you, why don't we have a placebo control, but the medicine